This little video will show you how to make use of a microscope to calculate the size or the magnification of whatever it is that you're looking at. So firstly, let's just define what is total mag magnification. Total magnification is the number of times that the image you see when you look down the lenses has been magnified in comparison to whatever it is that's sitting on your slide. So that's the ocular magnification times by the objective magnification. So if you're looking down an ocular lens that has a 10 times magnification and you're using your medium power 40 times magnification uh, objective lens, then you've got a total of 400 times magnification. But knowing how big something is, in other words, how many times it's been magnified, that's not really enough because if you start off with something that's two centimeters big and you magnify it five times, or if you start off with something that is 0 0.2 centimeters big and you magnify it five times, you're going to wind up with two completely different sizes. So in order to actually calculate size, you need to know either what the size of the original object was, or you need to know what the final size of the image is. And when you know one of those two things with the magnification, you can then work out the third. So why is it important to know what the size of the object is or what the magnification is? Well, quite simply, when you look down a microscope, when you start off, if you look at the big blue circle, when you start off looking down the microscope, you can see quite a wide view, relatively speaking. But as your power of magnification increases, the area over which you're looking gets smaller and smaller. And so it becomes quite difficult to gauge how big the object is that you're looking at. And so having an effective way to measure this is really important. So just to clarify, I'll give you a kind of more visual way of understanding that. This here is the field of view, what you're able to see when you're using your 10 times magnification lens, uh, objective lens. If we then move up to 40 times magnification, you can see that the size of that circle has decreased. And again, if we move up to 100 times, it's decreased even further. That is what we're referring to when we're referring to the depth of uh, view or your field of view. Just a, a, a quick aside, it's very difficult to identify structures clearly if your light is not correct. Uh, so just have a quick look. That is too bright. That's very good. That is too dim. Uh, if you don't have the right lighting, it's very difficult to be able to calculate things correctly. So make sure that you've got that sorted. Micrometers are both a unit of measurement that we use as well as a shorthand way of talking about the rulers that we use to make those measurements. Now a micrometer, depending on where you put it, gets a different name. So if we put it into the ocular lens, we call it an eyepiece graticule or a reticule. And if it's on a special slide, we then call it a stage micrometer. Now these things can be a little bit fiddly to make use of and so we're going to teach you an easy way to measure things relatively accurately, uh, certainly for school level uh, it's suitable. And what you need for this is a plastic clear ruler that has millimeter markings on it. So what you do is you take your ruler and you place it on your stage. In other words there's no slide on the ruler, it's uh, no slide on the stage, sorry, it's just your ruler. And this diagram here shows you there is your ruler that you can just view through uh, the hole in the stage and these black lines here, these are your millimeter markings. Now, if you remember that one millimeter is a thousand micrometers, you can estimate approximately how wide the diameter of your field of view is by knowing that that is one millimeter there, so it's a thousand micrometers. And if you think that little portion there is probably about that much, so it's probably a third of a millimeter, so it's uh, 1.3, 1.4 millimeters across is your field of view. You need to take those readings a couple of times, um, just make sure that every time you do that one of your millimeter markings is right on the edge of your field of view, otherwise it won't be accurate. Once you've done that, you obviously need to then convert into micrometers uh, because that's the unit of measurement that we use the moment we start using a microscope. So make sure that you take those readings and average them and calculate them into micrometers or convert them into micrometers. Once you've got that, you can then calculate your field of view for the other 
powers. And the reason is that you can use this little formula, d1 times m1 equals d2 times m2. What does that mean? Okay, because of the fact that every time you change power, your field of view decreases, but your magnification increases, the diameter of your field of view and your total magnification are actually inversely proportional. In other words, as one gets bigger, the other gets smaller. And so it stays the same. So if you're on low power, whatever your field of view is, whatever the diameter is, and whatever your magnification is, if you multiply those together, it's the same value as if you then go on to medium power and measure what your field of view diameter is and your total mag magnification. So as long as you've worked out what the field of view diameter is on your low power, and you know what your magnification is on your other powers, you can calculate what the field of view is going to be for those ones, which is really handy. Now, you need to actually go and do that, but as a rule of thumb, uh, approximate values, if you're using your 10 times objective lens, and this is obviously assuming that you've got a 10 times ocular lens, uh, which not all of the microscopes at school have, so you do need to double check that. Uh, but assuming that your objective lens is 10 times and your ocular lens is 10 times, your field of view is approximately 2 millimeters. Um, if you're using the 40 times lens, your field of view is approximately f uh, 0.4 millimeters. And if you're using 100 times, your field of view is approximately 0.2 millimeters. So that's a, a rough kind of guide in terms of sizes of, of your field of view. Now, once you know your field of view, you can then go back to calculating the size of your image. Remember that we said we need to know not only our total magnification, but either the size of the image or the size of the object. Now, when you're making a wet mount, you could probably take your ruler and actually measure the object on your slide and work out approximately what size it is. But that's quite a tricky thing to do. So knowing the size of the image is probably a little bit easier. And this is how you make use of it. If this is your field of view here, and you've calculated that your field of view is approximately two millimeters ac across. Remember I said that was very approximate and you need to check it every single time for the microscope that you are using because no two microscopes are the same. So calculate your field of view diameter on low power. If you now count, there are eight cells across there. So if we estimate how many cells fit across our diameter, we can then work out what the size of one cell is. So here you can see length of one cell, 2 millimeters divided by 8 cells gives you 0 0.25 millimeters, which we immediately convert into micrometers because we're using a microscope, which is 250. So one cell is approximately 250 micrometers in length. That gives us the size of the image. Now I can go back, knowing that I'm working here, for example, on low power, knowing that and knowing the size of my image, I can now go back, use my formula and calculate the size of my object. In other words, the actual size. Another useful feature of understanding the field of view is if you're trying to calculate something over surface area. So in this image here you can see a whole bunch of stomata or a number of stomata on the surface of a leaf and you want to work out approximately if you want to compare say for example top surface to bottom surface which one has more stomata. So there's my field of view. If I now count there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that I can see. However, very important rule, if you see something that is more than 50% within your field of view, you count it. If it's less, you exclude it. So we include that one and that one and this one and this one. Okay, but we're going to exclude those two and we're going to exclude that one. So we've got four that we've included, which gives us a total of 13. Now, I know that let's say for example this is my low power I know that I've calculated this diameter here field of view to be approximately two millimeters and I now use the formula pi r squared see maths is useful pi r squared I know that r is two millimeters so two squared is four so four pi uh, in millimeters remember millimeter squared is the area in here and I can then divide the size of my leaf which I can actually measure with a ruler by this size that I've calculated here, which is 13. Again, you would need to take repeat readings and take an average of the number of stomata in your field of view before you could do that. But it's a useful rule of thumb as a way to calculate uh, something in terms of surface area, number of objects in surface area. Okay, so just going back to that formula, the size of the object is the size of the image divided by your total magnification. Total magnification is easy, 
that's your two lenses, your uh, ocular lens and your objective lens. The size of the image is what you're going to calculate by first working out what your field of view is. And you do that using your little plastic ruler, which is clear with millimeter markings, and you estimate how many millimeters there are across the diameter. And you then use that to calculate how many cells or what size of image you're looking at in your field of view. When you do your drawings based on your observations, please, you need to remember two very important things. One, your total magnification. So in other words, which lenses did you use to make your drawing? Were you viewing it on low power, medium power, or high power? And then secondly, you need to do a scale bar. Now, for a scale bar, you could draw, for example, one centimeter. Uh, and that one centimeter represents the size of the image, one centimeter of the image. Above that, you then need to write what the size of the object is. So what does one centimeter really represent? And you do that by using this. You calculate your total size of the object, total size of the image, um, and then you divide by whatever size you've used for your scale bar.